In the 1960s, Giacometti's studio became almost as famous as he was, a symbol of Parisian artistic integrity. To understand why, I've come to meet the writer and art historian, Michael Pepiat. We know Giacometti's studio was this really small, smaller than, the, than, this, than this room, his studio, and he stayed there for 40 years. Can you yes. talk about that? About well, it's strange, isn't it? Possibly he found uh, in the studio, in the Rue Hippolyte, a place that was almost, I think of it, almost like a, um, like a shell. Mm -hmm. um, that it, it was his sort of carapace yeah. that protected him. Not so much it protected him from the world, but I think he found he had everything he needed there. Yeah. And this is rather, I mean, it is a rather marvellous thing that he could have had any kind of palatial space mm -hmm. with sort of, you know, rooms to draw, rooms to paint, rooms to make sculpture. But he had everything, this complete sort of essence in that single room, and it was a complete Giacometti universe. Yeah. It was its own work of art. In the it was end, its own it? work yeah. of art, exactly. But everything was, yeah. like you say, reductive, yeah. distilled, yeah. distilled yes. almost yes. To, to its purest sense. Absolutely. And then the studio itself becomes that. I think it probably helped him get to the essence. I mean, there wasn't a, a shred, not a suggestion of luxury. Yeah. All that came from this search for the truth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think that's why we're very moved by it. Giacometti's art, not just that it's reduced to the bone so that you've got this essence. You can't, you know, you can't reduce it anymore. You've, that's it. Uh, but it's because it's the essence of the truth. Yeah. that he's looking always to reproduce life, which, of course, is an impossible thing. Right. What was happening in the art scene in the 50s, 50s and 60s, up until Giacometti's death? Things were changing pretty distinctly, weren't Yes. They? By that time, I think um, Giacometti had partly become famous, not, not just for the work and his way of life, uh, but for this studio. And the studio, although he led a, um, a, a, a kind of monk-like existence there, uh, the whole world came to him. Um, Didn't Marlena Dietrich come to him? Yes, she Wasn't did, yeah. she did. Uh, Picasso visited him. Obviously, all those photographers visited mm -hmm. him. A lot of artists visited mm -hmm. him. Uh, huge numbers of poets and writers. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think they liked sort of seeing him in his lair. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, although it was terribly broken down, it was a sort of magical space that drew people. He only did what he wanted to do the way he wanted to do it. Yes. And that's what makes him so, so pure. Yes. You could say if you manage to capture the essence of, you know, of mankind, it's going to be uh, universal, and it's going to be um, it's going to be beyond uh, any any particular period. It's going to be for it'll all be time, eternal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes.